What's up YouTube? So today I'm going to try my luck at a how-to video and repair the instrument cluster on my Scion XB. If you're a uh, Scion owner, first gen 04 to 06, you may be experiencing this issue. I know um, I have been for many years now, but it's progressively gotten worse and that's where your instruments are they don't want to work <laughs> it started out when it was just really cold out they wouldn't work and that started with me probably about six years after owning my car and uh dropped below 50 degrees cluster wouldn't work it'd warm up and they'd start working since i live in florida it happened two three times a year i didn't sweat it however the past year it's been getting i mean it's really bad in fact i hardly worked at all most days so and i've started searching the forums and the youtube and did not find anything other than a couple little bleeps here and there where somebody had posted i replaced a capacitor nobody you know people ask which capacitor which capacitor and no and there's been no response no answers and then i stumbled across some videos where people are working on the priuses around the same time period 04 to 06 time frame and they're replacing capacitors so i thought why not take this opportunity pull my dash off, you know, apart, or not the dash, but the console, pull it out and replace some capacitors and see if it fixes it. If it does, great. If not, well, nothing lost. So, you know, there's no sense in ordering a, a used uh, cluster off eBay because you're most likely just going to get the same, you know, the same issue back. And then I did call a dealer the other day to see if it was possible that there was some, you know, way to find one out there. And he said, no, there, there's just no way you could find one here. So he even suggested eBay, but anyway so let's get to it yeah my car my scion is a 05 i've owned it since new since june of 2005 so i know the car inside and out and uh yeah i've got uh over 221,000 miles on it and I'm, my goal is to keep it for another however long i can keep it you know i want to get this instrument cluster fixed because it's just a noise that thickens out of me um yeah but anyway so let's get to it huh Okay, so normally what you would see in the morning or when it's cold out are the gauges are just sitting there twitching like that. And so I can tell now I'm sure it's going to work with no problem. So let me go ahead and just turn it on and see. And sure enough, it is working. So it's probably Murphy's Law. Um, it probably realizes it's about to be repaired, hopefully. So it's going to work and make things even more difficult. So first things we want to do is we need to take the... the instrument cluster out. It's very simple to do. And I already did it the other day so that I could go ahead and pre-order my capacitors. So I got them already here. But I want to let you know that the, there's one screw that holds this on. For some reason, I didn't have it, so I can't show you how to take it out, but there's a little screw right here, or there's supposed to be. I don't have one. So anyway, so at this point, it's just a matter of, I'm going to slip you over here, get a different angle. You basically just reach up and you kind of just pull it, pull it out. Just, so it comes right off. Just set that off to the side. And then you've got three screws that are holding it on. You got a screw here, screw here, and then there's a screw over on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and take those out. Careful not to drop them because I believe they would probably disappear somewhere deep inside your dash. All right, and then when you pull it out, you got the big cannon plug I'll show you, or it just comes right on out, pretty, pretty simple. But on the back, you'll notice you got the big plug here and it's just kind of pushed in here. So there's a little, little tab up here at the top you just push down and then Pull it out, and then this here just pulls straight out. You'll see it just slips in, and that's it. And then now we're gonna go over to the toolbox. All right, so here we are at the toolbox. I got the, con the instrument cluster out. I'm gonna flip it over, and you've got four screws. One, two, three, and four that we're gonna take out. All right, so after you get the screws out, you've got these little um, little tabs here you need to lift up. Just real easy, just lift it up a little bit, all the way around the edge. 
So three, four, five, six of those. Just take the back off, set it off to the side. And then in here, we're gonna do is, first off, we're gonna take this ribbon off. So you notice you got these little, I'll try to get some light in here for you. Um, I don't know how to describe those little tabs on the side, just slowly just pop up each side, on each side there. Just lift it up a little bit and you'll feel, you'll, you should feel it click up just a little. And you want to just pull this ribbon out of the way. Just go ahead and pull that out of the way. You've got this grounding strap that is held down with the screw. Easy, lift that up. And then you've got these little tabs here. You want to just pop them up a little bit and then just slowly go around, adding a little pressure, lifting up in each area there. And it should just come right on out. So you want to pull straight out. Now be careful because underneath this piece here, you're going to notice the the, um, the pins go straight into another like plug-like deal. I'm sorry, it was right here. That's where they're at, not there. So, all right, let's go ahead and set this off to the side. Like I said, the other day, I went ahead and took this apart and I wrote down each of these numbers for the capacitors, these little, you know, and, and I looked at these and none of them are appearing to be bad. Usually I guess they swell up or whatever. I don't know, I've never done this before, but that's what I saw online anyway. They all look good. You know, like I said, the, or the Prius video they show, it seems like everybody's replacing one in particular. I think it was a 116 volt. So, which I have two of those. I've got one here and one here. And then I've got, a looks like a 10, 16, and I'm not sure what that looks like, a 1035. That's a 333 and something other there, um, 35 volt. And you got a 135 volt. So what I will do at the, when I'm done here, and if this works out and this video is posted, I will have each, I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of these because I don't know which one's bad or which one's good. So I'm gonna replace all of them. I ordered them all, just so you know from here. This place here, um, digikey.com. So I will go ahead and post all the part numbers down below so that you can order them once, or order them as well. You wanna take note, my understanding, the little, the little, what do you call it, little black mark here on each of these, that is your negative. So you wanna take a photo so you don't forget where those go. I mean, none of these feel loose, none of them are swollen. So like I said, I'm gonna to try to replace them all Never done this. I mean, I've soldered wires and stuff before, but nothing on a, uh, like a circuit board or motherboard. So if it works, let's hope it works. <laughs> I did order extras so that should I really booger this board up, I guess I'll have to order another used one off of eBay and then try to fix it. So, all right, I'm not gonna go through the whole process of showing you how to desolder these and solder them back on. There's plenty of videos out there for that. So let's get to it and uh, I'll return here in a few minutes. I'm gonna provide a little update for you here. So I've replaced two so far, the 100 microfarad, 16 volt, this one, and this one. I did this one first and I tested it and everything looked good. The lights were not flashing or anything. But after a few minutes, the lights did flicker once or twice. I'm like, okay, let me go back to the drawing board. So now I replaced this one and I let it run for, well, for quite a bit. Lights on, lights off, accelerating and everything, and the lights have not flickered. So I'm going to stop right there, because this is a little bit harder than it looks, to be honest, and my solder gun isn't the best in the world, so I'm gonna hold off. I got some decent solder joints. They're not wiggling, they're not the prettiest, so when you get in there with a magnifying glass and look at them, but they're holding. And uh, I'm gonna leave it at that, and I'm gonna let it sit overnight, maybe a couple days, and then uh, see how it goes, and I'll come back and report on that. In the meantime, fingers crossed we got it, huh? All right, this is a very, very good sign. I replaced those two capacitors earlier, and the lights are not flickering at all. This is really cool, and, and the gauges seem to be real snappy now, too, whereas before they kind of hesitated when they did work but they are definitely popping up now. 
It's exciting. All right, we're gonna test the car out again. Oh, struggling over the right here. Okay. All right. Here we are. Today is the third day since I made this repair. And I've been checking it every day and it's been looking good. But I didn't want to call it an official fix until at least three days. So I'm going to crank the car. All right. You can't see the gauge. But boom, there you go. So I'm going to officially call this a win. It's fixed. If you have uh, stumbled across this, I wish you the best of luck in fixing it. And uh, yeah, pass the word around.